Hello, hello. Welcome back to the advent of code in Sintran. Are we live? Let me check if my audio is working. Yep, seems like that's working. All right, so it's time for day two. Uh, so before I get into day two, I said some things that were wrong on day one. I said that there's no way to optimize searching for a string in a substring. Uh, I mean, I, I wasn't exactly wrong, but what I meant was there's no way to optimize this index function in a low-level language. Uh, I, I stand by that. Uh, I, I think this could be optimized in Sintran a little bit. I think... First of all, instead of just printing these numbers, I want to put some labels on these to say like part one and part two, uh, so that I know which numbers are being printed. Uh, so right here, how does that get printed at all? Okay. <laughs> And then part two, I'm going to do the same thing. Let's see if that helps me know what I'm looking at. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Uh, I also want to put that in the template so that I copy that into the next day. So... How far back do I have to go? <clears throat> Why am I lagging? Anyway, yeah, that should work for the template. Uh, I also want some separators in this template for Purely for readability, this is just a tick of mine. So I can quickly see where the functions end. That wasn't right. That was not right. Okay, with the template now. Uh, did not want to quit. So I said there's no way to optimize this index function to search a string for a substring. And, and that's true. You basically need, an, can we say an order n squared loop? It's not really n squared. It's the order of the length of the string times the order of the length of the substring. So if they're the same length, it's, it's, uh, well, it's, well, it's not really order n squared because we're not getting, we're subtracting them in the outer loop. But you, you need a nested loop. That's my point. And you can't really optimize this. Uh, but I don't really need to compare one character at a time in Sintran because I believe I can compare a whole substring. So I can, I can get rid of this inner while loop. I can get rid of in the code, but like it's it's just falling back to a lower level while loop where it still checks every character. So we're not really making this more efficient. Uh, if this wasn't a low level language, it wouldn't change anything. It might make this slightly faster in Sintran. I, I don't know. <clears throat> I think I can yeah, comment out almost the entire body of that loop, and I should be able to replace it with like one line. And say all found equals uh, string i through i plus not j len substring. Uh, I think I want a variable for that. So let n sub equals the length of the substring. 
So we can compare that and see if it's equal to the whole substring. And let's see if this works before we get into day two. I'm not going to spend too much time optimizing day one. Yeah, that's the same answer we got before. Five, four, two, four, nine. Uh, is it any faster? I don't know, it's probably just as slow. Uh, it's marginally faster. Remember this was like 3.3 .3 seconds, I think, when we were running it yesterday. It's nowhere near an order of magnitude faster or anything, but it's, it's like almost half a second faster. I'll take it. Anyway, it shortens my code a lot, so I like that. Uh, I think I want to rename this variable. Just found. It doesn't need to be any more verbose than that. Oh, and then index back. It, so I didn't change index back. Maybe this can save me another half second. Uh, let's test that again. Make sure we get still get the same answer. <clears throat> I'll just copy and paste so I need that line, and I need this line. Although I haven't renamed the variable yet. So do I still get the same answer? And does this save me another 0.3 to 0.5 seconds? Yeah, uh, we're looking good. It's still not fast. People who do this in low level languages get their answer in like four milliseconds and Sintran is nowhere near that fast. Even Python is probably faster than this. So my language is slower than Python, and that's kind of sad. I, I, did a <clears throat> I did a benchmark a while ago where I compared like a simple prime search in Sintran versus almost the exact same code line by line in Python. And Sintran came out slightly faster than Python, but then, like, I added a bunch of features to the Sintran language, and that bogged everything down somehow. So now Python is faster than Sintran. Uh, and I don't know if I'm going to do anything about that. It's a toy language, yellow. So I, I also want to rename this now. And check it one more time. So... As I was saying, there's no way to optimize these index functions. You, you, still need, you still need to loop through i in the string to go like starting character by starting character. And then you need to compare every character in that substring to the given substring to see if they match. And even though I don't explicitly have a loop here, there's basically a hidden loop where we're going from i to i plus n sub. Uh, and I don't think there's any way to do that. Uh, maybe there's some extremely clever substring search algorithm that I don't know about. Uh, I could be wrong. But there is a way to optimize part two. So the thing that I'm doing wrong in part two is that I search, I search the whole string for zero. Then I search the whole string for one. Then I search the whole string for two. And then I do that again with like actual Arabic numerals instead of, you know, numbers written out in English. Uh, and that's not the most efficient way to do this. What you should do is check the first character of the string for zero, for one, for two, for three, for four, five, six through nine, and all the digits too. And if you don't find anything there, then you can go to the second character in the string and search for zero, one, all the way through nine. And as soon as you find something, you can stop and you don't necessarily need to search the whole string. Uh, I don't feel like that's going to save you a whole lot of time in day one here, because, like, how long are these strings? Uh, this is... I, I have my chat window here blocking everything. These 
Okay, 36. We have like a 36 character long string. Okay, it might save you a little bit so you can, you know, find 8 immediately instead of like searching the whole string for 0 and then searching the whole string for 1. So that is a way that you could optimize day one. I'm not going to do that. Uh, I'm going to jump into day two right now. <clears throat> That's not where I wanted to go. Okay, so I have my template Sintran code. That's the stuff we, we just added the separators into. Uh, I, I want like a little helper script to help me create a new day. Uh, all it's going to do is make a directory and then copy the template in there and rename the template. So I'm going to call that new day.sh. Am I in the right directory? No. Bang. And then uh, we need an argument. <laughs> I have to do a little argument parsing. Let's just. <sighs> I did this in AOC 2022, and now I'm doing it again from scratch, but this way you'll, you'll get the whole story right here in today's video. So. Uh... Make a directory. We're going to give the directory as a command line argument and then copy the template into that directory and rename it as main.sintran instead of template.sintran and then cd. Do I want a cd as part of the script? I think so. I think maybe I didn't do that in 2022. But that's going to be the basic idea of the script. Uh, and we have to tell it 2023 day two. And it did not CD. It made the directory. Does CD like not export back to the calling script? What if? If I push D instead of CD, is that any different? No, it, it exits back. Yeah, so that's why I didn't do it like that in 2022, because it doesn't work. Uh, maybe there's some bash setting I can do where it'll force that to work. Hey, Alvi, echo. My voice, oh, is there an echo? Uh, is, is there an echo? Do I have like an extra audio input that I don't know about? Uh, why is that thing active? So I hid something from my OBS thing. Yeah, my webcam okay. mic is on. Okay, I think the echo should be gone now. Is that any better? Let's uh, let's give it a second to test. All right, th thanks for putting that out. <laughs> Too many audio inputs, and and I hid them from OBS, so I didn't even know the other one was active because it, it was working yesterday and then it just activated itself today. So I had two audio inputs that were like lagging slightly. <clears throat> okay, so that made a directory. This doesn't work for some reason. I don't know, we're not gonna bother with that. And then we just have to CD or push D 2023 day two. And we're gonna want to get the test input at the very least. So let's check out AOC and see what day two is. This is 
This is the test input. And I should be able to just run with that template now. Uh, oh, yeah, so the template is wrong. I should print the sum. That's the actual variable that I had. Now I have to fix it here too. And that should, this, this should just echo the lines of the test input. There we go, there's the test input. Let me save the real input before I even read what this day is about. Okay, we should have that now. Cool. So what is today about? I'm not going to read this out loud. <laughs> Hopefully this isn't too hard. It, it shouldn't be too hard yet. The, the problems of advent of code should get slowly, m gradually more difficult over time, but like the first couple days usually aren't super difficult. Sounds like we're going to have to do a lot of parsing already. So this game is not possible because there are 20 reds, but hypothetically we only have 12 red cubes, so we can't have more than 12, so this is impossible. But games 1, games 1, games 2, and, and game 5 are possible. Only 3 and 4 are impossible. 4 is impossible <clears throat> because we have 15 blue cubes and that's more than the 14 blue max. <clears throat> and if I add up the IDs of the games that would have been possible, 1 plus 2 plus 5 is 8. Okay, so yeah, this is, this is going to be some painful parsing again, which we're going to have to spend some time getting some basics into Sindran. But then once we're able to parse this, it should be fairly easy. Are they always in the same order? No. Green, blue. Green, blue, red. Yeah, so they're always in different orders. So we have green, blue, then red. But here we have red, green, then blue. Okay, let's just... Let's just read this line by line and then work on the parsing. 
the separators, we have a colon separator, we have the game ID. Is that just the line number? In this, it's just the line number. But in the real input, <clears throat> yeah, it looks like it's still the line number. Uh, so maybe I don't need to parse that at all. The nice thing is that we have the scan function from yesterday. So we can pull that out of day one, put it in like utils or utilities.sintran and then include that utility in every day that we do so that we don't have to copy and paste that the scan and the index code for every day. Uh... Sorry, I ran this right. Yeah, I'm, I'm reading the lines. And now, I think before, before I really start the work, I, I want to pull out the scan and index functions into a separate file. So, let's call it utils.sintran. This is going to be at the top level directory outside of all all of the days and, and maybe the years if I end up doing multiple years in this repository. So it's just going to be utils.sintran and then I want to copy or, or cut the scan <clears throat> scan and index functions from day one. I think I also have to go back for that. Day one, main, yeah, there we go. So uh, I want digit cares. I want to cut that and I want the scan function and scan back. That's the first thing I'm going to cut. And then I also want index and index back. So this is going to break day one temporarily. Okay, so now I have utilities. Uh, and before I even get into day two again, let's go back and fix day one because this will be broken now. See, it says like scan. Oh, digit cares has not been declared. And the scan function has not been defined. And scan back has not been defined. So we need to include that shared utility in day one now. And you can do that with just the include preprocessor directive, kind of like C, uh, except my include has parentheses. So you then put a pair of parentheses and then a semicolon to end the line because you know basically every every statement ends with a semicolon. So I think it makes sense to have the include statement also end the line with a semicolon. I don't know why C doesn't do that. I, I think they were just lazy and they didn't want to do more parsing than they had to during pre-processing. So we're going to include dot dot slash dot dot. This is relative to the source file. Uh, utils dot Sintran. And that should run now. Yeah, we still get the right answers for day one. Uh, You know, let's do that in day two now. <clears throat> uh, I, I think I want to put this in my template actually, because basically every day is probably going to use some functions from these utilities.
Okay. Let's just do one line. Let's do game one and see if we can parse that, and then we'll worry about the rest of the games. So let's just delete the last few games from the test input. OK, and let's just try to parse game one. So I don't know if I want to get the game ID, but I definitely need three blue, four red. I need to parse that semicolon to know that's one what do we call this, like a sub game? And then we have one red, two green, and and six blue. Uh, and then finally, after the last semicolon, we have two green. <coughs> Are there always three in a line? few times per game, not necessarily three times. Uh... <laughs> okay, it, it can be more than three times. Yes, it, so the real input has one, two, three, four, five, six sub games in game one. So we need to parse all that dynamically. I think I do want to get the game ID. So we, we, we have the string for the whole line, and then let's figure out where that colon is, because the colon is the end of the game ID. And I don't want to confuse the game ID for like the number of some cube or whatever. So we're going to scan for the colon index. That's why I needed to pull out the scan function into a shared utility. So we have the colon at column six, but really like seven if we're doing one based indexing. Yeah, so that makes sense. So then we can get the game ID by parsing a number out of that. How do I want to do this? Well, game, I, 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 I might not make the assumption that the line number is always the game ID, but game is always four characters. So that makes things simple. Like we don't have to parse the word game. We can just skip the first four characters and then read an integer. I think if I read a space in an integer, I, th I think that should be okay in Sintran. Maybe I have to ignore the space too. I, I can't remember. So, uh, game ID is going to be parse i32 out of string. So, Zero, one, two, three, four. We want to start at four and go up to the colon index. Four through I colon. 
uh, and I think instead of game ID, I just want to call this I game for consistency with I call. I do Hungarian notation like that. If something is an integer, I start it with I instead of like putting ID at the end. That's that's just my style. And that should be one. Okay, that's one. Let me just test that with a real input real quick to make sure I can get multi-digit game IDs. Uh, yeah, 100, 100, so that works. 99, 99. Now we're gonna have to like loop through these sub games. So the first sub game is gonna start at the colon and it's gonna go up to the first semicolon. Uh, so we're going to keep track of those indices. We're going to call them I begin and I end, or I beg and I end. Uh, that's going to start out as that, and then for the first one, this is going to have to be in a loop eventually, but for the first one, I'm not gonna do the loop yet. And then this should give us, for the first sub game, it should be three blue to four red. Uh, only it's really like the, the colon plus one and maybe we wanna do like the semicolon minus one so that we don't have those delimiters inside the text that we're gonna work with next. Uh, yeah. So then let's call that a sub game. I, 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 don't, I don't think the puzzle prompt gave us any terminology for this. All they said is that uh, he'll do it a few times. Yeah, a few times per game. They don't necessarily call it a sub game, but I'm gonna call it a sub game because how else can I talk about it? So sub game is going to be string from I begin plus one to get rid of the colon delimiter, and then I end minus one to get rid of the semicolon delimiter. That didn't work. I forgot to close a parenthesis. Okay, so, okay. I should not have subtracted one from the end because when when you slice a string like this, it, it's already not inclusive of the end index. So subtracting one there was redundant. Okay, so we have three blue, four red. Now we're gonna have to parse more stuff out of the sub game. So we're gonna have to parse an integer and then which whichever color this is and then another one. Uh, and, and I guess we need this comma separator. There's so much parsing here. <laughs> Maybe I want a function to do this. I think I want a function to do this so that I can reuse I begin and I end. So let's call it parse subgame, and it's going to take the string of the subgame. So whatever this is, paste that there. And this is going to return a vector of colors. So it's going to be an RGB triple, and they're always going to be ordered consistently. Uh, Sintrain does not have multiple return values. So when you call a function, you get one return value out, and that's going to be n colors. 
but it can return vectors. So I'm going to return a vector of an RGB triplet, and they're always going to be in the same order. And that's like my little workaround now to sort of get multiple return values as long as they're always the same type. In this case, they're all integers. So that's how this is going to work. So we're going to have a function to do that so that I can like have local variables, I begin and I end, and I can forget about like the encompassing colons and semicolon delimiters. Uh, and, and I also have to have, this is going to have to be in a loop. So we're going to have to put this in a loop eventually. And for the final one, it's just going to be the end of the line. It's not necessarily going to be a semicolon at the end because they're weird like that. They don't end the line in a semicolon. They just have the semicolons in the middle. So we have to have extra logic to account for that, unfortunately. Parse subgame string. And this is going to return a vector of integers. That's a rank one array. That's a vector. That's how you put that in a function prototype. Okay, so my first subgame is three blue, four red. Now we have to get the numbers out of that. And if there's no green, we're gonna wanna return zero for green. Uh, so what I wanna do is just initial, notice there's no type checking for function return values in Sintran yet. So this is supposed to return a vector of integers and I have not even initialized a vector in the body of this function. All I do is print lines but there's no type checking for function return values. Uh, that's, that's on my to-do list. Uh, if you play around with this language, just watch out for things like that. Uh, it will get you. So let n colors equals, it's just gonna be a three by three vector, or three by one vector, a vector of length three. Let's put it that way. And it's gonna be all zeros and then that's what we're going to return. Okay, so we have a vector of all zeros because we haven't actually parsed anything yet. Now, we have to scan for commas and we have to we have to get like the number color pairs out from in between those commas and that's going to have to be in a loop so scan for a comma and if we don't find a comma uh, I'm, I'm gonna have to put some logic like this here too. Like if we don't find a semicolon, just go to the end of the line. This can be a one line if. I don't know if I've done one line ifs in Sintran and I don't know if I like the way it looks because like I don't have to have parentheses around the condition so it all just sort of jumbles together. I think that should work though. And then Uh, 
let's initialize beginning to negative one and then we can crop out the delimiter. So it's gonna be beginning plus one through I end. And then when we scan for a comma, it's gonna be the comma index plus one so that we'll crop out the comma. But at the beginning, it's just gonna be zero. Negative one plus one is zero. So we'll start parsing at the beginning of the, the sub game string. So we should get three blue. That should be the pair string. And yeah, that's three blue. Now we have to parse an integer and a color out of that. Uh, for that, we can use the index function. index the string. First, let's look for red. And if we don't find red, then we'll look for blue. Or no, let's, let's do RGB. Let's look for green next. And again, this is getting a little bit nested. If we don't find green either, finally we look for blue. Uh, and if we don't find blue, we're in trouble. I don't know how to handle that error. Let's just assume that we find it. Mm, there's gotta be a better way to do this. And I don't think we need to nest these. going to use i to keep track of which color we found. So we're going to initialize it to negative one. If we find red, there's definitely a cleaner way to do this, but there are only three colors. So I'm just going to copy and paste this code three times. Red is going to be zero. Red is going to be i equals zero. Green is going to be i equals one. And blue is going to be i equals two. And then once we have that, we can parse I think I want to rename this. That's going to be I red. This is going to be I green. This is going to be I blue. And then if we find that thing, I color equals I red. I, I need more brackets. I've got a couple things to fix here. Uh, one of the joys of making your own programming language is that there's no there's no syntax highlighting and there's no auto indentation in any text editor. So I put this bracket here. In any other language, this would automatically get unindented so that it goes back to this level. But I made my own Sintran. I made my own programming language. I have to do that myself. If I want syntax highlighting, I have to make some sort of like text editor plugin myself to do the syntax highlighting. 
Uh, and I looked into it briefly, and it's not as easy as I hoped it would be. So I think I'm just going to live without syntax highlighting. Okay, so if, if we find the color, we get the index of that color in the string, and then we also have like 0, 1, or 2 to set, to set something in this vector. This is a lot of parsing work. So once we find that, we have the color. Now we have to get the number. We have to parse the number. And that's going to be from the beginning plus one up until the end up until I color. So what's my return value? It's n colors. The element of that vector that I want to set is I. If we want to parse an integer from a substring, and that substring is going to be from the beginning plus one. I actually called it pair. Do I even, I don't think I even need a local variable. I, I, I really don't need a local variable. Because I'm, I'm, I'm getting the ind indices of string, not the indices in pair, the substring. So beginning plus one through the start of the color. And it's not inclusive of the start of the color. My video freeze. Yeah, my video froze. Well, I guess I don't have video. Can like fiddle with this in OBS. I don't think it's gonna like this midstream. Bear with me for a second. I don't know why my video stopped working. Might just have to do the rest of the stream without a webcam, and that's okay. Let me just delete my webcam source in OBS. It's gone for now. Let me try to add it back, but I don't know if this is going to work. Uh so many options in OBS come on man I don't think I even have an option because <laughs> my webcam is just not working at all video capture device there it is uh, and all the only option I have is OBS virtual camera and that's nothing so all right we're gonna do the rest of the stream without video oh no 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 I, I removed the display Okay, I might have to restart the stream, actually. Oh, no. I think we're back. But why did I scale this? Uh, transform. Reset transform? There we go. Okay, sorry about that. Well, we're going to have to do the rest of the stream without video. Uh... That's all right. Okay, what the hell was I doing? I think, I think that should be right. That should get my first number color pair. And I, I have to get the rest of them, so I have to put a loop in there. But that should get, that should get three blue, and then this is an R, G, B triplet, so it's, it should set this to three, and the other ones should be zero because I haven't parsed the rest of them in a loop yet. That did not work. I green is undeclared. I have to let. STE. 
All right, line 48. There we go. Okay, so we got three blue. We put that into the vector and then we returned it. Now I have to get four red, so I have to start a loop. And then this thing should be four because I want R, then G, then B in, in the conventional ordering of colors. So I have to put a loop around most of the body of this parse subgame thing. So these are just the initializations. And then we're going to loop until what? Let's just have a boolean. Not do while, it's just while. This isn't Fortran. While not end, we're going to put all of this in a loop. And the loop is going to end there. I have to indent this. OK, so I end is this. And at the end of the loop, we also want to update I begin to I end. And at the top of the loop, not only do we want to do this, but we want to set end equals true so that we break out of the loop. I think that should do it. That should get us a whole sub game. And then we're going to need another loop somewhere else to get every sub game within a game. But this should give us at least 403 for the first sub game within the first game. That did not work. Maybe I have a bug in scan that overflows the end. Clearly I have a bug somewhere. Uh, instead of having this local variable, let me just print it like this. Uh, yeah, it's length minus one, so that should be okay. Now what's going on here? We've got three blue, and then we failed to parse four red. Seven. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. I think there's a leading space. So it's actually 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Oh, OK. So, so essentially, I'm trying to parse like a 0 length string. So what I want is I end plus 1. And then I might not want that plus 1 there. Uh, I, I think we I think there's like a space of padding, so I think it doesn't really matter. Oh, 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 oh. Uh we don't want to scan the whole string for a comma. We want to scan the string starting from the last thing that we scanned. <clears throat> so maybe this was okay. So we want to scan 
starting at I begin up through the end. Uh, let's call it n, and then n is going to be the length of the string. And then we want to add this back to this index. So plus I begin. And I think we want plus one because we don't want to get stuck on this comma. So, so this is where I want the plus one. Is that right? Probably not. Nope. I need quotes. I, I need quotes around this so I can tell if there's a leading space or not. So let's print string equals, let's add a quote there. And then I think that should be a single quote. Okay, yeah, so we do have a leading space. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's I beginning. What I really want. So that that should be plus one. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, this this is so annoying. So if I, I don't want to check if this is less than zero, I want to check if this thing is less than zero. Yeah, I, I think I need another level of subroutines. I, I need another function to parse the pair so I don't have to deal with all these offsets. Is that the way that I want to do that? Because where I have like I begin here, I also have to put that in this index function and this index function and this index function. And I think that's easier if I have, if I, if I refactor that into a function. And this is also going to return a vector. It's going to tell me the number and the color, and the color is going to be encoded as 0, 1, or 2 for red, green, or blue, respectively. So it's also going to return a vector like the parse subgame function. So for blue would map to four comma two because four is four and then blue is two. So that's how this function works. Or that's how this function will work after I implement it. And, and that's gonna be like the body of this loop. Do I need a function? Maybe it's easier if I just have this pair local variable. I'm not sure. So this function might be unused.
could use the dot command there. Uh, Do I need the local variable? Maybe not. Yeah, maybe not. No. I, I have to modify all of those lines if I don't. Is that right? Probably not. Three blue, four red. I'm off by one when it's the end. So this should just be len str. Hey, four zero three. That's exactly what we want for the first sub game within the first game. So we've parsed this much. Now we have to do an other loop that iterates through all the semicolon delimited pairs. Uh, and it's going to be equally annoying because the line does not end with a semicolon. Uh, okay. Yeah. So how do I want to do that? I could like do the same logic that I just did, where like the pair the pair doesn't end with a comma because it, it ends with a semicolon. Uh, or you could just like pad the line and add a semicolon yourself and then parse that instead of the actual input line. It might be easier that way. I don't know. So this function is unused. I'll just comment it out for now in case I change my mind and want to put it back in. So the way that we had a loop here that said while not end, we're going to have a similar loop that parses through the subgames. Uh, I actually want to snip that so I can look at that and then copy the same idea somewhere else. Come on, snip and sketch. <clears throat> Is this starting or what? Is my audio still working, by the way? Yeah, I think it is. Bruh. That's not even the snip that I wanted. Oh, well. So I'm going to put that in my other monitor. Remember that, I'll be looking at it. And then the important thing is at the end of the loop, you also have to do this. So we set that, we set the beginning, and then we're going to have a boolean that keeps track of the end or not, like we had in the other function. And then, while not end, we're going to do all this stuff in a loop. And at the end of the loop, 
we have to do this. But we don't want to scan like this. We don't want to scan from the beginning of the string every time. We want to scan from from where wherever we left off. And then account for that by adding it back. This is the same stuff we copied. This is the same stuff we had up in the other function. I'm just sort of like manually copying it while looking at the screenshot of the other code. And if we don't find a semicolon, if we don't find a semicolon, we just want to scan to the end of a string for everything else. So if I end is less than I beginning plus one. We're at the end. There's probably a more elegant way that you could do this, but I, I just want to get this done because this is so much parsing work, which is painful to do in a programming language that doesn't really have a lot of built-in stuff to help me out with this. And I, I think that might be it. Yeah, let's let's see if that'll get all the subgames in the first line. So we got four zero three for the first subgame, and then we should get uh, one two six in that order, and then for the final one we should get zero two zero. So one two six and zero two zero. It's probably gonna crash. I probably did something wrong. What? That worked. That's crazy. <sighs> this is only part one. I'm tired, man. And this is just one line of part one. So let's try to do the rest of the lines. Is that right? So the final line, we should get RGB631 and then 212 or no, one, two, two. Yeah, so six, three, one, one, two, two. That looks correct. Now we just have to figure out which of these games are possible or impossible and then add up the game IDs that are possible. Uh, and did I parse the game ID? Yeah, I did actually parse the game ID. I did not make the assumption that it's just the same as the line number, which it is. Uh, So the max, max is 12 red, 13 green, and 14 blue. R, G, B, so 12, 13, 14. I have to hard code those somewhere. These are the max, and if we end up with more cubes than this in any subgame, then the game is impossible. Or if they're all less than or equal to these, the game is possible, and then we should sum up the game IDs, including that game ID. Uh, say let possible equals true and then for every sub game I'm gonna have to do possible equals possible and uh, so n colors less than or equal to nr max and then we can sort of copy and paste and modify r g b and that with a semicolon 
and then just print is it possible or not. What the hell is that? True, and then we should have a couple falses. Uh, I've, I've, I've got too much debugging. I have to turn off some of these print lines. Keep that one. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, I think that's right. So we have true, true, false, false, true. And that's exactly what we should have for the test input. And then if it's possible, we want to add that game ID to the sum. So And that should be part one for the test input. That's eight for the test input. Let's try it on the real input. That takes a second. Two, two, five, six. Let's hope that's right. Let's go. That's part one. All right. Uh, I need to get more coffee. So I'm going to take a short break. And I will be right back. So let's take a look at part two. Four red, there's only one sub game with red. Two green. So there's two green here and two green here and then six blue. So here we have three blue, but this one has six blue. So it has to be the max of three and six. The max of three and six is six. So we have six blue cubes. Uh, that doesn't sound hard to figure out. Oh, the power. This, is just multiply them together. 48, four times two times six. Yeah, that's 48. Okay, th this, this sounds relatively easy. Uh, the hard part was parsing and we don't have to do any extra parsing work for part two. Unlike in day one where we had to like parse out numbers written in English, which was super annoying. 
Uh, so we don't have to do any extra parsing here. We just have to like get some maxes and then multiply some numbers and then and then what, add them up. Yeah, so we have to multiply some numbers and then add up the, that product. <clears throat> that sounds not too bad. So let's see, does this run? Yeah, and it just it just repeats part one. But now this is part two. Uh, and I think I want to turn off more of these prints. That's part one. I still want the answer to part one. And then we're, we're not dealing with possible or impossible anymore. Now we're going to get like the max of these things. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to keep these variable names, nr max, ng max, and nb max, but they're going to function differently. So I'm going to initialize these to zero. Yeah, I think zero is the right thing to initialize them to. And then every time we read a color triplet, so, so we're not dealing with possible anymore. So I can delete that. I'll just comment that out. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these triplets and we're gonna accumulate them in the max. So nr max equals max nr max n colors zero and then the same thing for the other colors rgb rgb one two and then the product of these three is what i'm interested in and we're going to add that to the sum so sum plus equals nr max times ng max times nb max uh, let's do that with the test input. Nine, four, eight, zero. Is that right? No, that's not right. So, so did I get four, two and six? Oh, okay. I, I know what I did. I have to reset the max for every game. Where's part two? So I have to do this inside the loop. That's still not right. Did I save this? Because I think that should be right. Okay, what the hell is happening? This should be easy. Four, two, six. I, I don't have any delimiter, but this is four and two and six so four two six one three four one three four okay this one 20 20 13 6 20 13 6 
14, 3, 15, 14, 3, 15, and 6, 3, 2. Oh, wait, 2, 2, 8, 6. Yeah, the, this, this, this is the right answer. I don't know why I thought that was wrong. Uh, yeah, so 2, 2, 8, 6, that's actually the right answer. What? It's 2, 2, 8, 6. Okay, so I got 9, 4, 8, 0, and that was wrong. And then somehow, like, I fixed the bug and didn't even realize that I fixed the bug. So yeah, this is right. Let's try it on the real input. This might like overflow. Maybe I need 64-bit integers or something. Nope, I hope not. Let's see if that's right. Let's go part one and part two. Once we did all the parsing for part one, it didn't really take too much extra work to finish part two. So that's it for day two. I'm going to get this committed, and then we'll wrap up the stream for today. How long have we been going? Uh, hour and 21 minutes? I think that's actually faster than day two, or day one, as long as it doesn't take me too long to get this committed. I was thinking about taking a look at my private leaderboard, but... Maybe I won't dox those people. I don't know if they want me showing it on the stream or not. So we did a bunch of stuff. We actually edited day one so that it uses an include file. And then we added this utils.syntran file, which is included in every day. That way I don't have to copy the shared functions every time I start a new advent of code problem. So there's the include file. We cut this out of day one and we moved it into the include file. So that's gonna be a lot of diff, but it's really just a simple cut and paste operation. I put this label on the output so that I don't just see a number, I see part one equals number. More cut and paste. And then I added that to the template too. And then we added all of day two. So I think that's it. Oh, by the way, off stream, I added a readme here, so that if you go to my AOC Sintran repo, you will see a little bit of a description more than just advent of code in Sintran. So if you want to build this yourself, there's a link to the Sintran repo because you'll have to build the interpreter from source. And then there are also instructions on how to run an advent of code solution. Like for day one, you CD to the day one directory and then run the main program. And then for day two, all you do is change this to zero two and then run the same program. I name it, I always name it main.sintran within every directory. So there's a readme there now. Uh, and what was I looking for? Okay, yeah, so add 2023 day two. Let's push that. I forgot to pull my readme changes. Now I have to merge. That's annoying. We're going to get an extra merge commit. So this should be up now. We have day two. And there's the code that we just wrote. Uh, I'm going to go back and delete this function. You know, we have this little helper function to parse a subgame. And then we have part one and part two. Uh, I, I might want to go through and clean up some of this commented junk. So 
So this is unused. This is just plain wrong. Did I use? I did use this pair local variable. This is from part one, so I don't need to have that commented in part two because it doesn't do anything. I can turn off that logging. Uh, let me make sure I got all the other logging turned off. I did not. There we go. So that's a little bit cleaner. Are those answers still right? 2256. I'm pretty sure I remember that being correct. 2256. <clears throat> 2256. And let's double check this again. 74229. Yep, that's still right. All we did was delete a bunch of junk and turn off some prints. And that's it. So I, th I think I'm done for day two. I will probably stream day three sometime tomorrow morning around the same time that I did this. Uh, yeah, that's all for now. I'll catch you next time.